Hey everyone, so today's video is going to be an empties video. I think it's been probably like three months since my last one. I usually film them at like the end of every season and share the products that I used up. So I do have a good amount of makeup. I have only a couple of skincare products because I think when I filmed my last empties video, I had a ton of skincare. So thankfully I haven't used up too much, which is good because skincare I feel like is the most expensive to repurchase. And then I do have a lot of hair products. So I'm going to go through and share my thoughts let you guys know which products I'll be repurchasing which ones I have found replacements for and which ones I just don't think are worth the money so I hope today's video is helpful the first one is the Urban Decay all-nighter waterproof setting powder this is something that I have repurchased multiple times and it's a product that I really love I actually already did repurchase this product because it broke on me probably in the middle of the summertime. I think I was traveling and it broke in my makeup bag and I was able to use up the majority of it, but I find that some powders are a little bit softer. So once you hit pan on them, the rest of the product crumbles so easily. And that's definitely the case with this product, which honestly sucks because it is a little bit pricey. So I did end up repurchasing it because it is something that I feel like I really do love having in my collection during the summertime. And I think that I will continue to repurchase it. I usually only go through like one a year because I do use it mainly in the summer, but it is worth the money in my opinion. If you have really oily skin or you live in a hot climate or you just want a powder that will lock everything into place, this is a great option. I also used up the Flower Beauty Light Illusion Perfecting Powder. I have the shade Porcelain, and this is one of my go-to powders because it makes your skin look so smooth and airbrushed. So it's really nice to use on top of foundation on days where you just want your skin to look extra good, and it is one of my favorites. It's a little bit pricey for more of like a drugstore brand, so I already did have a backup on hand because sometimes when I'm placing an Ulta order and my favorite brands are on sale like if Flower Beauties buy one get one half off I will buy like a powder and a mascara that I know I'll end up using I try not to keep too many backups on hand because I have noticed that my preferences change and makeup does expire but if you can get your favorite products on sale and you know you'll use them that's when I feel like it's a good time to buy a backup I just don't do it super often so I did repurchase this and I think that I'll continue to repurchase it for a while because it is my probably my favorite powder. I did use up the ColourPop No Filter Concealer. I used up two of them. This is a product that I do use up pretty consistently because I do use it as foundation probably like once or twice a week when I don't want to wear a full coverage foundation and I'm doing like a quick 10 minute makeup look. I did film a video on how I do that, so I'll link it in the description box below. But when I do that, I always use the ColourPop concealers. So quick tip, if you guys did not know this, there's a little stopper in concealers and other products like this, like maybe lip gloss that you can actually pull out with pliers or tweezers, and that will allow you to get out the rest of the product. And it's so surprising, but when you pull that plastic stopper out, you have a significant amount of products still in there. Like for me, I can use these concealers for another few weeks once I pull that stopper out. So definitely make sure to do that so you can get every little bit out. I also used up two liquid liners. So I used up the Too Faced Better Than Sex liquid liner. And when I tried this out in the spring for the first time, I thought it was going to be my new go-to liquid liner. And then later on, I tried out the Urban Decay Perversion, and that's my absolute favorite. I can't imagine that I'll really purchase another liquid with liner now that I've discovered that one because it works so well. The reason why I like this Too Faced liner is because the tip of the liner is just a little bit longer and slightly more tapered than other liquid liners. So it makes doing winged liner so easy. I have a hard time with winged liner. I feel like it's so hard to get it very sharp, very even and crisp. And I was able to do that with this pen, which was a huge advantage. It is a brush tip liner, so it glides on the eyes so easily. I will say that it dried out a little bit more quickly than I thought it would. The Urban Decay Perversion Liner has lasted me for such a long time, and this one dried out pretty quickly. So it is a high-end liner. That's something to keep in mind. It's not as smudge proof as the Urban Decay liner either. So I do find that if you're like rubbing your eyes a lot or you've really watery eyes, it probably will 
it probably will smear on you. So honestly, I won't be repurchasing this just because I do think the Urban Decay Perversion Liner is so much better, but I love the shape of this one. I think it goes on really easily. I also used up the Smashbox Always On Liquid Eyeliner. This one is a felt tip liner. I just really don't like felt tip liners as much as I like brush tip liners. They're not as easy to work with for me. I think you get more control because they're not as flexible as brush tip liners, but I just find that I like a good brush tip liner more and now that I've discovered the Urban Decay Perversion I really don't think I'll be purchasing another liquid liner so this one was okay I feel like it performed just as well as maybe like this Stila liner but as far as felt tip liners go ColourPop makes one and that one's like maybe like seven or eight dollars so I would definitely reach for that one over this one, I just didn't find this one to be anything special, so I wouldn't repurchase it. Now, a Smashbox product that I did really like is the Smashbox Super Fan Fanned Out Mascara. This one does such a great job at separating your lashes and making them look really long. If volume is not your main priority and you prefer, you know, just a really separated fanned out look, this really does live up to its name because it does a great job. It also does a great job at grabbing onto each individual lash, so I love using it as a bottom lash mascara. Right now, I won't repurchase it just because I do have lash extensions, and honestly, it's hard for me to justify the price of a lot of high-end mascaras because there are so many good drugstore options. But if this was to go on sale during like Ulta's 21 Days of Beauty, I would totally grab it. And if you are a high-end mascara fan, and like I said, if like length and separated lashes are your top priorities, I do think you would like it. I did use up two of the Anastasia Brow Wiz pencils. I wear the shade Dark Brown. This was my go-to pencil for the summertime, and I do still love it. I had like a little stockpile because I purchased a bunch of them during Ulta's 21 Days of Beauty last fall for like 50% off, which was a great deal. I do think that this is still my favorite brow pencil, but since then I have discovered that I do like the CoverGirl brow pencil and I've been testing out a few other ones. I'm trying to use one up from ColourPop. I've been using one from e.l.f. I've been testing out the new Hourglass pencils. So I do have a couple of other options that I'm working through, but the Brow Wiz is probably my favorite. I just feel like the formula is really good and the color is like a perfect match for me. So I do love it. Okay, let's move on to skincare. I only have a couple of skincare products. I finally used up the Polish Choice Skin Balancing Invisible Finish Moisture Gel. It took me such a long time to use this up. I feel like I've had this for, I want to say years, which is kind of crazy. I feel like it probably expired, but I think the reason it took me so long to use it up is because for some reason I kept it with my makeup instead of with my skincare. So the only time I would apply it is if I like forgot to apply moisturizer, which what are the chances that would actually happen? So I don't know why I didn't actually move it to my bathroom, but I did finally use it up. This is a really nice option if you have oily skin and you prefer a gel moisturizer. Now, if you have oily skin, you can totally use a really rich moisturizer. In fact, sometimes it will help to balance out your skin. A lot of people say that oily skin just needs extra moisture. And I mean, I believe that in some aspects, but some of us just have oily skin and it doesn't matter if we were to like dunk our head in a bucket of moisturizer, it, it's still going to be oily at the end of the day. I think topical skincare products work, but at the same time, genetics play a part, diet plays a part. So, you know, I think you don't have to be afraid of using moisturizers, but I do think gel moisturizers are sometimes nice for oily skin because they are a little bit more lightweight and not everybody with oily skin wants to kick off the day with like a super intensely dewy hydrated base. And if that's you, that's totally cool because I know that our skin will be oily within a few hours. So this is a nice option if you just want more of like a soft matte finish. I used up my favorite eye cream. This one is the Banana Bright Eye Cream. I actually took a break from this for probably a month and a half because when I first got my eyelash extensions, I was very paranoid about using any products that had oils in them, anything that was too heavy around my eyes, or really my entire face. So I cut back on a lot of my skincare. I still think you have to be careful, but I do think if you just apply products very carefully, you can kind of avoid any issues. But anyways, I took a break from using this. And then once we kind of hit like the very beginning of September, the weather changed and all of a sudden my under eyes and my eyelids were a little bit dry. Nothing too crazy, but my regular like moisturizer just wasn't cutting it. So I pulled this one back out and honestly, after about four days, my skin 
was perfectly smooth again. So this product really does work well for me. I know that it claims to be like a brightening eye cream. And I've told you guys before, there's only so much that like topical products can do to help under eye darkness. A lot of times it's very hereditary and you're not going to see results using like a little bit of an eye cream. So that's not why I necessarily like this. I like this product because I find it to be very moisturizing and it makes your skin feel very soft and very smooth and it does not irritate the skin around my eyes, which can be very sensitive to skincare products. So totally works well for me. I will continue to repurchase it and I just love it. I have never found an eye cream that I like enough to repurchase until I found this one and now I've repurchased it like five times. So I used up the Drunk Elephant Sea Firma Day Serum. This one is 0.5 fluid ounces. The full size bottle comes with one fluid ounce, but I do prefer to get this in a smaller version whenever possible. The full size bottle takes me forever to use. It takes like six months to use up and I haven't noticed that mine's gone bad, but I have gotten enough comments from people saying that theirs has gone bad before they've actually used it up that I've been trying to purchase like smaller bottles if at all possible. Now I am taking a break from using this even though I don't really want to because I am testing out a new uh, vitamin C serum from pharmacy. I feel like whenever I talk about this product, I get so many comments from people saying that this brand is overhyped, this product doesn't work. I was actually watching a couple of videos on YouTube that were saying that like applying topical vitamin C doesn't really make a big difference for the skin, which I thought was really interesting. It's so weird to me because I can see a visible difference when I use this product. And I would say maybe it's like a weird placebo effect, but I've taken before and after photos and I've shared them on my channel. And it's kind of crazy the difference that I see when I use this product consistently. Like, I don't know if you guys can see it. I make this face like this a lot. So I have like a really obvious wrinkle right here. And I feel like it's even more obvious because I have not been using my C Firma. I don't know what is in this product, but it really does tighten my skin very well because I haven't been using this for probably about a month since I've been testing out the pharmacy one. And the pharmacy one definitely has pros. I feel like the actual serum is a lot more comfortable to use, but I just noticed that like, you can see that wrinkle. It's not the end of the world. I'm going to have wrinkles. I totally get that, but I really do feel like this product tightens my skin. It keeps my skin looking clear and I don't know, it just works well for me. So it's like sometimes you have to use the products that work well for you and I really like this. I'm also using like a three or $4 cleanser from e.l.f. that I really like. But overall in 2020, I would definitely like to do more research when it comes to skincare products, but I also feel like you know, research and claims, like they can all say something, but in the end, sometimes you'll just see visible results from a product that maybe doesn't necessarily give others those same results. So I feel like I'm getting off on like a rabbit trail, but I just, I like this product. It works well for me. I've tried to replace it so many times, but I just haven't found anything that I like as much. So I think that I probably will end up going back to this, but I would recommend going with like a smaller version because I have heard from so many of you guys that yours does tend to oxidize or expire before you finish it up. I did use up this little mini Drunk Elephant Virgin Marula Facial Oil. This comes with 0.1 fluid ounces. I always take this with me when I go out of town just because I do love using a facial oil probably like once a week, either after I exfoliate or even just just to put it on because I feel like it makes my skin look so smooth and hydrated the next day. This is a little bit of a heavier oil, but it doesn't break my skin out or clog my pores. So I do love it. And I did just use up this little mini version. The last skincare product that I used up is the Polish Choice Daily Replenishing Body Cream. I really like this product. I used it probably like all winter last year. And then I finally used it up. It takes me forever to use up a body cream because I do have a couple of them that I'm currently using, but I just purchased the First Aid Beauty Ultra Repair Cream that comes in a bottle like this. So I won't be repurchasing this one for now, but it is a nice option. It is a very soft moisturizing body cream. It's not quite as moisturizing as the First Aid Beauty Ultra Repair Cream, but it doesn't feel sticky or heavy on the skin. It's like a nice go-to option. I was using it on my hands because if I had it at my desk, I could apply it and then like go back to typing on my computer and I 
wouldn't feel like my hands were like overly moisturized. So I do like this one, but I just like the First Aid Beauty a little better, so I won't be repurchasing it now, but it is a nice option. Okay, let's finish up with a few hair products. So I did use up the Briogeo Be Gentle, Be Kind Banana and Coconut Nourishing Superfood Shampoo and Conditioner. These are like the yellow ones that I featured in a recent video, and I did like them. I actually have them in my shower right now because I did repurchase them because I couldn't decide if I loved them or if I just thought they were okay. It seems weird that I can't decide how I feel about them after using up the entire bottle, but honestly, I was out of town the entire time that I used these for the first time and I was traveling and I felt like that definitely had an impact on my hair as well because sometimes like different water makes your hair feel very dried out or very soft, it really depends. So I wanted to use them at home and see how my hair reacts. I do feel like they kind of dry out my hair a little bit. Like my hair is looking dry. I do need to cut it. Like I could use a good trim and I do use a lot of heat on my hair, but I feel like overall, I like them, but I feel like long term, they might be drying my hair out. I'm not completely sure. So I have to come back and update you guys after I use the second bottle. But I also used up the Briogeo Be Gentle, Be Kind Kale and Apple Replenishing Superfood Conditioner. I don't have the shampoo because I think I used that up before I used up the conditioner. I go through shampoo so much more quickly than conditioner. I liked the green bottles. I've had these, I've repurchased them over and over, but I felt like they were too moisturizing. So I kind of feel like the yellow version is a little drying and the green version is almost too moisturizing. So I feel like maybe I need something in between. I kind of felt like when I used the shampoo from this line with the conditioner from this line, it was like the perfect balance. So I feel like I could do that, but it's an expensive line and I like to be able to purchase them as a duo because you save money when you do that. So I don't know. I think for now I'm going to skip over these and just like completely switch gears and go to a different brand. I do like the green ones. I know that for sure. I just feel like maybe they're a little bit too hydrating for me at this point, but we'll see. I'll keep you guys updated because I just feel like I shouldn't be that torn on these, but I am. I used up two of the IGK First Class Charcoal Detox Dry Shampoos. This is my favorite dry shampoo. It takes me about three months to use up one bottle, so I think I used one up right after I filmed my empties video last time, and then it took me about three months to use up the next bottle. This is my favorite. It works so well for me. It does not irritate my scalp. It really keeps my hair looking clean, and like I've told you guys a million times, I was never able to go to days without washing my hair but now if I wash my hair and then like later that night I spray this in the next day I can wake up and just kind of like comb my hair touch it up and I can wear it down again on the second day which is nice I don't always do that but at least now I have the option and it is a little bit pricey but honestly it works so well. IGK is vegan, cruelty-free. They are one of my favorites. I finally used up the IGK Thirsty Girl Coconut Milk Leave-In Conditioner. This is such a good product and it took me a really long time to use it up. A little bit goes a super long way. So you really don't need a ton of this product. It can have a tendency to weigh your hair down if you use too much because it really is super, super hydrating and it has cut down on frizz so much. I really don't find that my hair is very frizzy these days. What I do is I I shampoo and condition my hair and then I let my hair air dry a little bit and then I'll spray this all over my hair comb it out and let it air dry like 75% of the way and then I'll blow dry the rest and my hair is so soft it is frizz free it really does work so well and my hair feels just healthy and it looks healthy. This is the best leave-in conditioner that I've tried and I get a nice even application with this product. So I did repurchase it. I'm using it right now and it really is such a nice option. I did use up the Briogeo Rosarco Milk, which is also a leave-in conditioner. I do like this, but I don't like it as much as the IGK Thirsty Girl. The issue for me is that when I'm washing and drying my hair, like it already adds to the day. Like it takes so much time to actually do that. So when I spray in, in a leave-in conditioner. I don't want something that's going to soak my hair all over again because then I have to blow dry it and then I have to put heat on it even longer and that kind of defeats the purpose. So I will use this product if I'm letting my hair air dry for the day, but I don't do that very often. So the Thirsty Girl is so lightweight that I don't find that it really extends the drying time for my hair. So that's like the one picky reason why I don't like it as much as the IGK 
IGK product, but I feel like overall it works just as well, but that's why I probably won't be repurchasing it anytime soon. I finished up the Kenra Volume Spray. This is their Super Hold Finishing Spray at number 25. I have like the giant bottle because I bought this when it was on sale at Ulta. I I've gone through it in the past, but I think I used a smaller bottle originally, but I bought it on recommendation from Kelly Gooch. Kelly Gooch has like the best hair in the entire world. So whatever she recommends, I'm going to try. And I do really like this product. My hair is so hard to curl, like it does not hold a curl. And this product works well. What I usually do is curl my hair pretty tightly and then I'll spray it with this. So after like an hour or two, it falls a little bit and it looks a little bit more natural. Sometimes on YouTube, I feel like I, I like film the video before it starts to fall so it's like really tightly curled but this product really does work well to hold the curl and then it's flexible it doesn't feel like dry doesn't feel I was going to say dry and I was going to say crunchy so I almost said drunchy it it doesn't feel crunchy and I just really like it I think it works well the next day when I wake up most of my curls have fallen out but my hair is just so like it doesn't hold a curl very well. So I feel like if your hair does hold a curl very well, this hairspray will lock it into place for days. But typically I don't mind because I just kind of like touch up the front pieces and I'm good to go again. But overall, I do love this product. I think it works well. It does add a lot of volume. Like if you pull your hair, if you pull it out and like spray it like that, it will add a ton of volume and make your hair look super thick and voluminous. Okay guys, that is everything that I recently used up. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I really do appreciate it. If you guys still like empties videos, let me know in the comment section below or give this video a thumbs up and I'll be sure to keep filming them. Otherwise, I hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you very soon with a new video. Bye.